Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's have an episode all about tomatoes, potting them up, dividing them, and, and uh, getting them ready for their last leg indoors before they go outside. I really love my cheap improvised seed starting table and potting up table. This is a good place to work back here. Okay, so I have my tomato starts here. These were put in on the 11th of January, so they, they've been in these trays almost a month, and they're really, uh, they needed to be potted up last week or maybe even the week, the week before, but they didn't get to it. Stuff happens. And so they're starting to look a little stressed because they're in these little cells and they're, they're really needing some fertilizer, some uh, good soil to grow in, and they're really needing to be divided. We uh, mass sowed a lot of these, and you can see that in each tray, in each little cell, there are multiple plants. So we've got to get these apart, and we're going to pot them up today into these little individual containers. So I'll show you how to do that, and we'll talk a little bit about tomatoes. Now, when potting up tomato seedlings, um, the idea is just to get them growing in a little bit more soil that has some nutrition in it while you finish them off indoors under the lights. I have to get them in a bigger place. Their feet need to spread out. So you can pot them up in something about this size, a three by three cup, a three and a half by three and a half cup like these, or even one of these peat pots like this. These are okay, you, uh, you can use those as well. So I'm just gonna use a, a, a mash of things here. What we're gonna do is just take some regular commercial potting soil and fill these trays. Now this is a standard commercial potting mix. And there are some chunks in it. You want to try to break up those chunks a little bit. I need eight varieties to survive out of all these. The rest are giveaways or backups. And then I need eight of my, uh, eight of two other varieties here to fill my main tomato bed. And all the rest of these are going to be in pots and spread around the garden in different places. But the chief ones I'm concerned about are these, uh, these indeterminates here. And so I'm just going to pop them out as a whole. And there we go. You can see their roots are pretty nice in there. But we're just going to squeeze them. Just squeeze them and start breaking it apart. You don't have to worry about breaking their roots. These are tough little plants. Again, it would have been nice to have these a little bit smaller but they will make it, they will survive, and I'll prove it to you by showing you in an upcoming video. So we're just gonna divide these out like this, squeeze them. Tomatoes wanna grow for you. You don't have to worry about hurting them. That's all you need right there. That's a perfectly divided plant. So I'm gonna lay this where I need it, divide out a few more. I don't care if they're leggy. Leggy tomatoes are no big deal. You just well, I'll show you what you do in just a moment. You know, these tomato plants, they are incredible. All those hairs along a tomato plant stem uh, has the potential to become a root if you grow it in the ground. And so we're just going to dig these guys out, break them apart. And though it looks brutal, they're going to be just fine. That's enough roots. That's all you need right there. Dividing tomatoes is one way you can start the tomatoes in a smaller amount of space with using up less soil and uh, you know if you're on a budget and you don't have a lot of soil maybe so potting soil or seed starting mix is not readily available in your area this is a good way to save some money just put them all in a small bit like that and you can start tomatoes cheaply I'm gonna take my hole maker 5000 and I'm gonna dig a hole all the way to the bottom and I'm going to shove my plant in all the way up to the leaves and pinch it. And that's all there is to it. In fact, Craig LaHoulier, Craig LaHoulier of uh, author of Epic Tomatoes, he lays them on here and just shoves them in with his finger or his thumb. But the difference is he's using a potting mix that's dry and it doesn't have much resistance to it. This stuff is kind of wet and so I can't just shove them in. So we'll pull these cotyledons off. You can go in at an angle if you need more distance. This guy's really long. 
he's really long, so I want to try to get him in as far as I can. I'm just going to take that eraser and shove those roots as far as I can. I'm going to take my finger now, get those roots way down in there, and then just pinch up. All right, that's all there is to it. Hole maker 10,000, shove it in. Hole maker 10,000, shove it in. When you're germinating tomato seeds, you want to look for a temperature on your seed trays around 70 to 80 degrees. These guys germinated at 95 degrees because I, I had a problem in my in my uh, grow room and uh, under my lights. My lights fell a little too low and began to burn these. These will be plants I can give away. Always remember to label your plants, especially if you plan to do any plant breeding and um, or you get, you're giving them away, people need to know what they are. So these are what, big beefs? Yeah, big beef. Oh dear, there went my, uh, my hole maker combo rider 2000 lost its lead, gotta go sharpen it. Now when you're dividing tomatoes, you wanna move quickly. You don't wanna let these little roots that are exposed over here dry out. These peat pots, when you use these, the manufacturer says that you can just plant these directly in the ground and the roots will grow through them. I have not found that to be entirely true. I have found that some plants will grow through them, but, but any plant that does grow through it, it's a big hindrance to those roots because these peat pots are pressed and they're pretty dense and even when they get wet, they're pretty dense. So I like to peel them off when I'm, when I'm planting. Um, but they do make nice little pots for what we're doing here. We find a couple of good looking guys. There's one right there. Nice root system all the way down. Big beef. This is an indeterminate and I'm hoping it will perform well for me this year. These are hybrids that I'm planting, not heirlooms. Um, an heirloom is just a stabilized hybrid, essentially. It was a bred at one time that, that makes it a hybrid. But it's stabilized, meaning it always comes true to type. It's open pollinated, but will always return the kind of tomato that you expect. And that um, is called an open pollinated variety. It's not a hybrid open pollinated. But what makes the difference between an open pollinated, if my understanding is correct, and a hybrid is that, I mean, an heirloom, is that an heirloom just has a story behind it or a long heritage and is a, a, a storied, fabled, variety that people love. All right, well, there's our big beefs. That's how easy it is to plant these things up. And now I'm much more confident in these plants ability to survive the next couple of weeks before I plant them out on March 1st or thereabouts. It depends on the weather. Granadero is a uh, hybrid as well. I got my seeds at Johnny Seed and I selected my seeds this year to be varieties that are vining and determinants. Uh, indeterminate means it, it just it will grow and grow till the weather kills it off or until you kill it off but um, an indeterminate will keep growing and growing and I, that's what I want uh, I want continual production rather than like a determinate or bush variety those produce once and are done or once or twice maybe two or three flushes of fruit and then they're done but they don't they don't vine as much they are more like a um, they're more like a, um, hmm, like a, like a little bush, like a tree. And I have some of those over here. The ones that I have are dwarfs and micro dwarfs. And you can grow them in a pot and they stay pretty little. So uh, I like that. Again, big root ball like this. I'm going to take off some of these roots, some of that, some of that soil so I can fit it in my cell. If I have a big old root ball like that, I'll just open this hole up all the way to the bottom because I want to bury this as deeply as I can to beef up that stem get that stem growing roots out into there I find the idea of growing tomatoes in America to be um, one of those cultural things that you always associate with gardening there is a book called the tomato in America and it's an interesting read about the history of the tomato in North America. 
and the fact that it used to be considered poisonous because it's a nightshade um, was interesting to me and just to find out how tomatoes were developed and where they came from and the culture that developed around them uh, it's quite fun and it's funny when you go to the when you go to the store like the Home Depot the big box store and you look at the garden department and you see the plants they're offering for sale you know 50% of all the vegetable varieties are tomato plants and they're growing these big huge plants in these one gallon containers and they're much too large for the container and there's tomatoes growing on them already don't buy those unless you're immediately unless you're just a you just can't stand it you know you gotta save those plants but they're too mature for their pot okay all our tomatoes that we're going to use this year are potted up there's a little bit of a surplus there what I'll end up actually using is probably the contents of just one of these trays and the rest will be given away now a lot of those little seedlings have gone to compost but that's okay we'll just use them in that way that's the benefit of planting lots of seeds as you can select the plants that look the best now I'm not worried about getting the leaves wet here this first time watering this potting soil is uh, new potting soil and not a lot of soil borne disease in there right now but as they grow I will water them from the bottom just remember that the soil is deep and the roots are down at the bottom we poked our hole all the way to the bottom so we'll water from the bottom by filling these containers with about a half inch of water each time we water them in all right let's get these back under the lights all right so my target date to plant these out in the garden is March the 1st but as I mentioned earlier I may have mentioned it earlier we're gonna have a cold snap a late winter freeze is coming and so I don't know if I'm gonna get them out there at that uh, you know that early however they'll make it in here for the next two three even four weeks and they'll grow up to about that high by the time it's time to plant them out and when they get that high these little pots will be too small so that's the step up that we're doing that's potting up and dividing and it's so easy okay so moving ahead with caring for these plants I'm not going to fertilize them yet they received a little dose uh, a half dose of fish emulsion about three or four days ago and that helped some of them perk up a bit and green up a bit but I'm going to let them get over transplant shock and the shock of being divided before I hit them with any kind of fertilizer there's plenty of fertilizer in that potting soil there's plenty of nutrition in there for them to use and they can go forage around and get their roots established but in about a week and a half to two weeks I'll come back and I will use yet another uh, very low dose liquid fertilizer you can use whatever you want if you're the miracle grow kind go for it I use fish emulsion on these because we're going for leafy growth just right now they need mostly nitrogen and then when we put them in the garden they will have everything they need well there it is thank you for joining us today on black gumbo southern gardening we are really ramping up the videos this spring as we head into spring. We'll have a lot of content coming and we appreciate your subscription. If you find our channel helpful, please subscribe and like us on Facebook where you can ask us questions. Follow us on Instagram where you can see the, the daily photos of the garden. Maybe not daily, but you'll see the daily life of the garden. And man, we're so glad you joined us. Happy gardening to you. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.